Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us for another Cook with OC program today. Before we begin today's webinar, Osteoporosis Canada acknowledges the land that our offices located in Toronto are on is a traditionary, traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabek, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. My name is Tracy Napoli, Director of Fund Development and Marcom at Osteoporosis Canada, and I will be your host today. This cooking demo will provide general information about cooking and food knowledge, and it's not intended as individualized health or nutrition advice. So if you have questions about nutrition, please consult a physician or registered dietitian. Now, during the webinar, we want to hear from you. So if you have a question or a comment, you can click the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen and enter it there. Now we're gonna do our best to answer as many questions as we can during the webinar, but it's all within the time available. Nutrition is a key component for strong and healthy bones. Calcium, vitamin D and protein are essential nutrients for bone health. Calcium is one of the key minerals that makes bone hard. Vitamin D ensures our bodies can absorb enough calcium and protein is also necessary to build and repair bone. Osteoporosis Canada recommends that whenever possible to get calcium and protein through food sources. Now today we have two recipes and we're going to be using ingredients that maybe you're not familiar with, that uh, they have both calcium and protein, but they're smaller amounts and even small amounts of nutrients contribute to your daily intake. Now, Greek yogurt does have a good amount of calcium and protein, and that's one of our ingredients. But did you know that medjool dates, chia seeds, oats, almonds, dried figs, cinnamon, blackstrap molasses, and sunflower seeds also have amounts of calcium and protein, with the exception of the cinnamon and molasses, there's no protein in those servings. Now, the amounts I showed you, they're all for smaller amounts, but even those small amounts, as I said, of nutrients contribute to your daily intake. So we're gonna show you two recipes that use all of these ingredients. So today's two recipes, we've got molasses cinnamon granola, and per serving, you're gonna get 66 milligrams of calcium and five grams of protein and a smoothie bowl. And that's 150 milligrams of calcium and 14 grams of per, uh, protein per serving. Now I'm going to share the links to the recipes in the chat, so not to worry. And now I'd like to welcome Emily Richards, who's a professional home economist, freelance food writer, chef, and she is the author and co-author of 10 cookbooks. Emily also writes and develops recipes for print and online publications that include everyday cooking and healthy eating. And she can be found on TV, radio, and webcasts just like this one. So welcome, Emily. Thanks, Tracy. Hey, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. It's the middle of the week. Um, and I'm excited because that means we're closer to Friday. <laughs> and I get to spend some time with you. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we're doing a couple delicious things, um, and for those of you that don't know, um, I love granola, um, and I love making granola, so this is kind of right up my alley, and I love sharing granola, so we're going to give you some tips on how to share it, too, um, just in case you want to share it with a special person, you know, Tracy, Mother's Day is coming up, just in case, right? Well, <laughs> it, you know, yes, um, actually it is, and as delicious as this is, wouldn't this make a great little gift to package up and bring to someone in your life that you want to celebrate on that day? Exactly. I have some birthdays in May too. Um, so this, too. And, I know, and I know that they'll love the granola. So it's perfect. Yes. Um, if you hear some excitement at my house, it's just my dogs because they're so excited. They know that I'm working and they love being loud. <laughs> 
Um, so we're going to make the granola first. And um, I think what would be great, Tracy, is as we're, I'm adding the ingredients, um, maybe we can remind everybody about the calcium amounts um, as we add the ingredients or work with the ingredients. If you have any um, questions as I'm working through, as Tracy said, please um, post them um, in the Q&A if that's easier for you and we can um, answer them, hopefully, fingers crossed. <laughs> Absolutely, and as always, we're going to be giving away an unbreakable apron. Can you see that? Hang on as I keep moving it closer. Well, it's better if you look at Emily. Yes, Emily I'm wearing it, I'll model it for you. There you go. So <laughs> if you're on the webinar at the end, I will draw a name. Um, but yes, I know we've got a couple of questions already. And yes, we are recording this, so if you, are looking to rewatch it, no problem. Um, it will be on the OC Replay webpage in uh, 24 hours after we finish this webinar. So Emily, take it away. Awesome, thank you. So we're gonna start off with our dry ingredients first, which um, granola is mainly oats and we are using large flake rolled oats. So um, the reason why we're using them is because they really add the texture and the crunch once toasted. Um, as opposed to using a quick oat or a one minute oat. Those are processed, they're broken down a little bit. So those are the ones, if you um, buy those little packages of oatmeal, those are the ones in those packages. So they're meant to be cooked quickly. Here, we really want that texture of the rolled oat. Okay, so I have three cups in here and I love keeping rolled oats on hand. They're great additions to so many things, not just on their own, but more importantly, they toast up beautifully. So we're going to add a few things to this. We're going to add some slivered almonds. And slivered almonds are basically lengthwise um, sliced almonds. So you can buy sliced almonds, which are those really thin um, sliced almonds. You could also buy whole almonds and chop them if you want. This just makes everything similar size. And you'll notice everything we're adding, um, including the fruit, is all kind of the same size. So that when you bite into that granola, it's a beautiful texture as well. So I'm using the slivered almonds because the amount of time that we're toasting the overall granola will work beautifully and will get really nice flavor and color um, to the, the almonds as well. If you're not an almond fan, switch over because they have great calcium in them. Um, but you could use other nuts here um, as well. Uh, a pecan would be really nice or a walnut um, would be beautiful. And if you're living a little bit large, those macadamia nuts are delicious too um, to use. Uh, and then we're also gonna add a seed, sunflower seeds. So I'm adding about half a cup of sunflower seeds in there too. And we're adding all of these in the beginning because we want them to get toasted and crispy and build up that flavor. So with the almonds and the sunflower seeds, I know you had those up early, Tracy. How much um, calcium would be in them? In the almonds and the sunflower seeds. So yes. first serving, I'm sorry, sorry? Yes, those the almonds. Oh, those two. Okay, seeds. sorry, sorry. So for the for the sunflower seeds, um, so for twelve grams, because you know sunflower seeds aren't something you're going to have copious amounts of. So it's nine milligrams of calcium and two grams of protein. And for the almonds, now almonds do have more calcium, but for twenty five almonds, you would get eighty six milligrams of calcium and seven grams of protein. So. When you put all of these ingredients together, this is where you get the benefit. And that's, and that's the bonus. So we're kind of building as we go along and you'll see every time we add an ingredient. Um, and that's why um, all the information Tracy gave you in the beginning is so helpful because if you think about this, when you're cooking or baking at home, a lot of these things build up to help build up your calcium and your protein. So that's really, really fabulous. So we're gonna add some flavor to this. I'm gonna add two teaspoons of ground cinnamon. Now, if you want to have a little bit more spice, ground cardamom would be a beautiful substitution for this. Um, so if you love um, chai tea, for example, cardamom is the main flavor. So that is a beautiful um, switch out for the cinnamon. And then I'm also gonna add just a little bit of salt here because we want um, all the flavors to come through. So I wanted to stir this all together, okay? And make sure that that cinnamon is coating everything. That's really kind of the visual that I'm looking for because it has that little bit of color to it, okay? And then I'm gonna set this aside. Oh, I love the smell of cinnamon. Um, it kind of just comes up as a nice little perfume, so it's beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna set that aside. And now we're gonna get our liquid portion together, um, which is kind of the glue that helps um, keep everything together, but also adds the crunch. Um, to our 
granola. So I'm going to start off with, and there's a reason why I'm starting off in this order, and hopefully you'll figure it out. I'm going to start off with some neutral oil, okay? Because I want the flavor of the cinnamon and the molasses to come through, I'm using something that has an oil that has basically no flavor. So a canola oil would work um, really well here, and then all the flavor of the cinnamon and molasses will come through. So three tablespoons goes in. Then we're going to add our molasses. So the reason why I started with the oil is so that this molasses will slide right out of my measuring spoon, okay? Just like that. So I have a nice empty spoon and we're gonna use the same amount, three tablespoons of molasses. So this is actually um, gonna add some sweetness, but great color. It gives a really, really nice golden color. And oftentimes when we think of molasses, we think of gingerbread because that is one of the main ingredients in cookies or gingerbread loaves and cakes or muffins and things like that. And so here we are using it for similar reasons, but also for the surprise factor that it does have a little bit of calcium in there too. So that's going to build our calcium amount overall in the granola and it adds a nice flavor. Now we're gonna add, if some of you are thinking, why are you adding maple syrup? You already have the sweetness from the molasses. When you're using a blackstrap molasses, it's a little bit um, more pungent and a little bit more robust in flavor. So it may not come across as sweet to some people. So I'm just adding a tablespoon of maple syrup. Now, if you don't have maple syrup, you could use a little bit of honey. If you love molasses, you could even add an additional tablespoon of molasses. Totally not necessary, but it will kind of soften that little bit. Now, here's what I love, citrus. And this may be something a little bit different you haven't added to your granola before, but I love using some orange rind, okay? So I'm just gonna take my rasp and take off about a half a teaspoon of fresh orange rind. Now, if you happen to have lemon, that would work beautifully here too. If you're a grapefruit lover, grapefruit would be beautiful, but I absolutely adore orange. So I'm gonna add a half a teaspoon right in there. Okay. And I am using a fine citrus rind so that it disperses really nicely across all of the granola. Okay. And then I'm just going to whisk this together. So nice and easy. And because of the ingredients that I'm using, for those of you that might be wondering, you know, I have a vegetarian in the family or a vegan and I'd love to make them some granola. This is the granola that you can make for them with all the health benefits in it too. So this is a vegan granola, which is fabulous because we've used that oil in there. All right, so just kind of get that together and it's going to kind of look a little bit thick, which is exactly what we're looking for. And I'm gonna drizzle this over top. Make sure you get it all in there. And here's where you're gonna put a little bit of muscle it's actually not a lot of muscle, trust me, it's just a little. You're gonna stir this to make sure that your oats, nuts, and seeds get coated really well. Now, I want you to spend a little bit of time on this because it is important. We wanna make sure that all the oats, seeds, and nuts are coated well with that molasses and oil mixture, okay? Because we want the flavor to come through beautifully. So as I'm doing this, Tracy, I don't know if there's any questions that have come up, but. I'll be stirring this for about 30 more seconds or so. Is that, is that good? Okay, good. Okay, good. Yes, yes, we do have questions. Now, I wanted to talk about molasses. So you mentioned gingerbread. This doesn't mean we're going to have all these gingerbread cookies to get all the molasses <laughs> as much as I love gingerbread. But we'll dump them in milk. Exactly. That is the way to do it. <laughs> so, um, so, but there is a difference. So the molasses that has the calcium is blackstrap. So that's the, the kind of molasses that you want to use. Um, we did have somebody ask a question on that. Um, and let me just see. Yes, so in terms of calcium, it does. A lot of questions on if you can switch out ingredients, et cetera. So here's the thing. And we always want you to have the ability to pick and choose what you want to include in these recipes. Um, but when you take something out that has the calcium and or protein, you want to make sure you're putting something in. So if you're going to switch out the sunflower seeds, you need to do a bit of work. And really, the packaging, the labels at the at the, the back of the packaging that you, you purchase, you can get online, the calcium calculator on the Osteoporosis Canada website. Just make sure you're reintroducing foods um, that you want to 
to um, switch out perhaps. So like the the figs that, uh, and I'm sorry, did you add the figs already or has that happened? No, we're using dates today. Oh, we're using dates. Okay, so here's a good one. There is calcium in dates. It's not the same amount. Um, so for one date, you've got 15 milligrams of calcium and one gram of protein. And for two figs, so kind of, it's, it's pretty close. For two dried figs, it's 27 milligrams of calcium and one gram of protein. So if you, you want to switch out dates for dried figs, go ahead, because you're going to be able to do that. So we had some questions on, on that. And then one other question, did we touch on the gluten-free? No, we didn't touch on gluten-free. That's a good so question, Emily. Right? That do is we, a great question. Do we, can this be gluten-free? Is this gluten-free? So gluten-free, our main ingredient here is oats. And so you do need to check the label because not all oats are produced in um, gluten-free facilities. So that's something that you do have to be label ready to read and check that they're gluten-free. With all products, no matter what you use, if you are a savvy gluten-free shopper, you're looking at labels, you buy ingredients that are you know are gluten-free, so that is the way to go. Now, if you're preparing this for someone else, um, then at, that is gluten-free, you do have to take those precautions. Obviously, check the labels, make sure they're gluten-free. And if you're using things at home like um, silicone sheets or anything like that, to bake, and I'm talking about that as we go into the baking portion of our granola, they need to be cleaned properly as well. So I always like to um, use parchment paper so that I know that it's kind of fresh and clean every time it hasn't touched any gluten. So the silicone mats, I'll show you what they are because I have them in here. Um, they're the, the reusable mats that a lot of people like myself like to use when they're baking, okay? Um, and obviously you wash them every time, but I always like to make sure and use parchment paper because you never know, okay? So it's always good to, to be sure. So that's why I'm using parchment, um, which leads me to baking the granola. So you can see it's got a beautiful deep golden color from our molasses, and we're going to put it in on a baking sheet. And I've already got my oven preheated at 325, okay? so. We want to make sure that this granola mixture, this oat mixture, is going to be fairly spread out. So if you have a nice big baking sheet, that's the one you want to use and just kind of spread it evenly. And then I want you to make sure that you get, see how all of my oats are kind of stuck to my spatula here. I'm going to make sure that they all get into my pan. And then don't get rid of this because we have to stir this a couple times while it's in the oven, okay? Because if we just left this here, it would kind of not um, toast up very evenly. So by stirring it a couple times in the oven, we'll make sure that it's nice and even. Okay? So I'm gonna pop this into the oven and put my timer on. So the total time is about 25 minutes. So I usually like to check it um, just before the halfway mark to give it a stir. And sometimes if your oven is not, let's say it's not um, baking as evenly as you'd like, you might have to turn the pan. Um, I know sometimes as ovens get older, they get a little cranky and they have some hot spots. So you might wanna just kind of spin your pan around to make sure that your granola is nice and toasty. So I'm not gonna make you wait for 12 minutes. I do have some that I baked up this morning, okay? So that you can see how beautiful, and I don't know if you can hear this, but it's crispy, it's crunchy. It makes noise, okay? And this is when you're going to add your fruit. We're not adding our dried fruit in the oven because we don't want it to dry out. Okay? And we don't want all that natural sugar to come out either. So with the warmth that's left in the granola, that will kind of help bring the flavors together. So this is when I'm going to add my dried fruit. And this is where, again, options, totally whatever you have in your pantry. I have dried cranberries. Okay, I'm going to add some. These are diced dried apricots. I always add a nice little bit of color. And my medjool dates. Okay, so this is when Tracy was talking about the figs and the dates, um, that's a great substitute um, for our dried figs. 
Okay, so I'm gonna just make, sorry, the dates tend to be a little bit sticky. So I'm gonna kind of just toss everything together here. Okay. So they will soften, your dried fruit will soften a little bit from the warmth of the granola, just like that. And if you have golden raisins or sultana raisins, dried blueberries, dried cherries, um, if you have currants, whatever you happen to have in your baking cupboard, um, you can switch up or add a little less or add a little bit more of one. So we've given you the amounts for each. So as long as you kind of have that amount, and this is really about kind of having a balance of crunch and a little bit of chewiness from the dried fruit as well, okay? So I'm just gonna spread this out a little bit here. Like that. All right. That's our granola. Now I just like putting this into a bowl and like snacking on it <laughs> by the handful um, because it's so yummy. Um, and it just has that nice little bit of crunch to it, which I also love. We are going to do a couple things with it. Um, we're going to make a smoothie bowl because that's a great breakfast. It's also a great kind of afternoon pick me up. Um, so, you know, if you want to step outside of the smoothie in a glass um, situation, the bowl is kind of a nice way to sit down and enjoy it. So here's the thing. We make smoothies in the morning because we got to go, right? A smoothie bowl, not so much. You can't really take your bowl with you. So this really is kind of um, making you aware of your surroundings. And if you're making the bowl, you're going to sit down, you're going to enjoy it by yourself, perhaps with your family or a loved one, and take that time to enjoy what you're eating in that moment. And the fact that you made the granola and the smoothie, smoothie bowl is a great combination, okay? Um, I'm gonna bring over the ingredients for the smoothie bowl. Um, are there any questions, Tracy? Yes, there are. And everyone's, I'm, I'm looking at the comments and they're like, oh, this looks delicious and they love it. Now, someone did ask, what is molasses made out of? Now. I'm not a molasses expert, so I did a Google search, and oh, uh, <laughs> there we go. And it's it's a product of, according to all the sites I'm looking at, sugar beet and sugar cane, and it's there's a whole refinement process. So um, you two can go online and learn more about molasses, uh, which is great. We do have a question on how long will the granola last in terms of freshness? Because I know I like to make a really big batch, so I don't have to make it more than once, but some stuff doesn't last as long as others. But what do you think, Emily? So we did in the recipe, we did include um, how long you can keep this. Now, I'm going to be upfront with you. It also depends on where you live. So if you live in a really dry area, granola is going to be great. <laughs> Um, as humidity and moisture as we kind of turn into those summer months, sometimes it will decrease in time. So I have happily kept this granola um, up to one month in a sealed container, okay? And that still has that nice crunch. Now, remind, just as a reminder, over time, everything changes a little bit. So um, the granola sometimes will absorb that little bit of moisture from the dried fruit and become a little bit softer or it'll clump. And that's okay because it's still delicious. But if you find that it's getting a little too soft, what you can do is just pop it in the oven or even on the stovetop in a skillet, give it a little quick toast. And if you haven't had warm granola, let me tell you, it's delicious um, and enjoy it again. So kind of our, our best for flavor and texture is up to a month. Now, of course, many, keep it for longer and that's okay. Um, but you might need to kind of revive it a little bit more. That's all. And when you make granola, sometimes we just think, okay, I made granola. I'm going to eat it. I'm going to have it in the morning with my yogurt and kind of be off. There's so much more you can do with granola. You could add, this is, don't Tracy plug your ears, but you could add this to a trail mix with a little bit of chocolate would be really nice and dark chocolate and some extra nuts and take it, you know, on a little hike would be absolutely delicious. Um, you could also add it to your baked goods. Granola and cookies, great texture. You already have the fruits in there and you have the benefit of all the protein and the calcium that we've built into this granola, which is fabulous. 
You could also add it to the top of your muffins. Let's say you're making banana muffins and you just have that little bit of granola left and you're like, what am I gonna do with it? I don't feel like yogurt this morning. Make a batch of muffins and put that granola on top. You'll get that nice little crunch. If you're making a loaf or a cake, bun cakes with that little bit of granola on top are absolutely delicious. So you really can kind of expand where you use granola outside of you know spooning it in the morning on your yogurt. Brings me to the smoothie bowl. Did you like the chocolate? Should I not have said that, Tracy? No, you're so funny. <laughs> I'm not the food police. So <laughs> I'm not the food police. No, no, everything in moderation and, and everything, it's all about choices, right? And I, I love chocolate. No, but it's all about like, you know, what we're what we're gonna add and what we're gonna eat and what we're going to to choose on that day. And I love how you gave the ideas, like the muffins, never would have thought to top. Because it's, I like texture, right? Bit of crunchy texture. Um, one quick question, one last one before we go to the smoothie bowl. I'm a huge smoothie person. Because um, I love when we do recipes and I say, you can put it in the freezer. Is granola something we can put in the freezer? So remember I said about <clears throat> humidity and moisture? Yes, you're right. You're Not right. so good in the freezer. Not so good. So this is one <laughs> of the recipes we would probably say, especially because of the dried fruit, I'm thinking. Yes. Um, so you know what? It's it's shelf stable though, right? You've made it. It is shelf stable. Yes, Perfect. for sure. Perfect. Now, if, it, if, by, if by chance you did put it in the freezer, it's not the end of the world. When it comes out, it's going to thaw and be a little bit soft. Again, just pop it in the oven um, and kind of revive it for a little bit. Um, note that your dried fruit is in there this time and you will have to do it for a little less time. And even if you drop the temperature of your oven by 25 degrees would be helpful so that you're kind of drying out any moisture that's built up in the granola from the freezer, um, but not over drying the fruit, for example. So Sounds good. All helps. right, so let's get to the smoothie bowl, yum. Okay, so I um, dug into the freezer and I'm very limited on the amount of, I love getting fruit in season and chopping them up, sticking them in the freezer so that on an April day when there's no fresh fruit, you can pull them out um, and enjoy that flavor. You don't have to do that. You can pick up lots of frozen fruit, lots of varieties, mixed berries. In this smoothie bowl, again, some options for you. I'm using strawberries and peaches. Um, you could use blueberries, you could use raspberries, whatever you like, whatever you have, and a frozen banana, okay? So this is really what helps build the texture of the bowl itself so that it has a nice um, kind of thicker um, texture than if you were just making a smoothie, for example. The other thing that helps is that Greek yogurt. That's also giving us a great amount of protein. Um, and you can also find higher protein Greek yogurts as well. So a great option for you. And this is plain yogurt. So oftentimes when people are making smoothies or smoothie bowls, the first thing they do is grab that blueberry yogurt or the strawberry because they really want that fruit flavor. Um, use the natural sugar in the fruit and go for the plain yogurt because those flavors will come out beautifully and the color is always gorgeous too. So I'm using um, just one cup of plain Greek yogurt and you can see it's nice and thick, okay? I'm using, this one happens to be a 2%. Um, if you wanted to use a 0%, you definitely could as well. So that's gonna go in and then I'm gonna add, I'm basically gonna just add everything. So this is already peeled. This is my frozen banana. And if you put your bananas in the freezer, with the peel, which is totally cool. Um, what you can do is just take a little paring knife and peel it as you would an apple or an orange and just peel that skin off. Or if you plan ahead, peel them as they're ripe, lay them flat um, in a Ziploc bag or however you're gonna freeze them. And you can put them on a baking sheet and freeze them solid and then kind of move them around. What ends up happening if you just kind of stick them in a bag, they'll get all mushed up. Um, and if you're going to be using them for smoothies, you may not necessarily want them mashed up, okay? And then I'm gonna add my strawberries. So this is just a cup of frozen peach slices and a cup of sliced strawberries in there as well, okay? And I can already smell the molasses and cinnamon. Um, and I heard my little timer, so we're gonna have to stir it in a second. Okay, and 
guess what? We're going to add some dates to this too, because I have them. Um, and these are medjool dates that I'm using. So these are those nice, big, soft, um, they almost taste like caramel. This is a great little kind of quick snack for anybody who loves dates. I love to just, you just open it up. There's a pit in the center here. You can add a little bit of almond butter in here with some almonds, close it back up, and you have a quick little kind of energy snack um, to enjoy. We are going to be using two dates in our smoothie bowl. Okay. And you can do this um, anytime you're making a smoothie in the morning as well, okay? That's my timer telling me I need to, um, did I take out that bit? I guess we'll find out. You're not needing it, it's all good. <laughs> all right, I'm going to, give my, I'll show you kind of, this is, so this would be kind of the halfway point here. I'll bring it over. So I don't know if you can see, I'll show you the difference in color. So we'll do a side-by-side -side here. Okay, see the intensity? So this is the one I'm shaking here. That's the halfway point. That's our finished one there. So what you're gonna do is just make sure you stir it. And at this point, it's still kind of soft, sticky. It smells wonderful though. Okay, and then make sure you spread it out again so that it gets nice and toasty and even. All right, so that's gonna go back in and I'll put the timer on again. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so I've added my dates, possibly a date pit, but we'll find out. <laughs> I think I took it out. Don't bite on it if there's a date pit in there. I know from personal experience. Don't do it. <laughs> well, don't do it. I think it'll be okay. I okay. I, 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 I exactly counted two pits, but we'll see. There you go. All right. I don't even hear that. It's that quiet. Oh, I can hear. It's it. that quiet. I don't even hear that. <laughs> so as you're making this, you want to make sure that you scrape the sides, okay, so that you're getting everything. All mixed together. Now, the texture of this will also vary based on I mean, the food that you're using. So, some berries are a little bit smaller. They might be a little bit juicier than peach slices. Depends on if you have um, some of the sweet um, peaches that you've frozen, as opposed to store bought that may have been from anyone. Okay. Sorry, now I feel like that's really loud. Hey, Emily. Um, yeah. I think I couldn't hear the uh, the food processor, but while you were talking with the food processor on, I think your audio was cutting in and out a little bit. Could you, you just repeat? Hear me now? Uh, isn't that crazy? No, oh, we can hear you now. No, it was just when it was running. Oh, okay. Could you just so, repeat what you said, just in case anyone else didn't get to hear you? For sure. What I was saying while it was spinning around was the texture of the smoothie bowl itself will change dependent on the fruit that you're using. So if you have summer fresh fruit that you've frozen, there might be, there's gonna be a lot of juice in there. So this might be a little bit of a softer mixture as opposed to something that you're just picking up at the grocery store. Blueberries, for example, will have a little bit more juice perhaps than the peaches um, or the strawberries. So just depending on that mix, but we do want a fairly kind of think almost soft ice cream texture for our smoothie bowl. So I'm gonna just buzz this up one more time just to get it a little bit finer. I won't talk. That's, it's all good, it's all good. That looks good. Somebody asked, so here, so I'm gonna answer a question while you, while you pour it out. So, okay. you know, whatever appliance you have, Emily, concur or not, if you have a food processor, if you have a blender, if you have an immersion that the, the hand, is that what it's called, Emily? The, um, you know, the hand one, yeah. the immersion blender, or if you have, uh, I'm trying to say without using a brand name here, the, uh, you know, the one, you have the cup, you put the, the blade on top, I have one of those. Um, you can, you can use them. You just need to see what the capacity is. If it's a really small uh, bowl, you may need to, do it in in batches. Emily, what do you think? It, it's true. So there are different sizes of food processors, blenders, and such. Um, you may find, because this is a thick mixture, um, you may find that your blender will need a little bit more liquid. If that is the case, if you're using um, 
a dairy-based yogurt, you can add some milk in there. If you're using a non-dairy or plant-based yogurt, you could use your plant-based beverage to just kind of give it a little bit. And you don't need to add much. Blenders, because they're conical like that, sometimes they just need a little bit more liquid in the bottom to kind of give it a go. And then once it's in there, it'll have that nice smooth mixture. So that's totally okay to do that. Um, and some Greek yogurts might not be as thick as others as well. And if you don't have Greek yogurt, um, you can use other yogurts. You could also, as I mentioned, use a plant-based yogurt. But as we mentioned earlier with those substitutions, take a look at the calcium and the protein because that's really where you want to benefit from having um, the ingredients that you're using. Okay, so I'm going to do two things here because I want to, here's my beautiful, I love this color um, with my granola. And we're going to top our smoothie bowl, but doesn't look, I just, I feel like I want to eat, dive into it, but I'm not going to, I'm going to wait because I want to show you a couple of things um, to do, actually two things really, but these types of jars. So these are all kind of glass jars. This is a jam jar that I've kept, um, mason jar. And these types of jars are great for um, storing your granola in. They're also great for gifting, okay? So what you can do very simply is, and this is what you wanna make sure you do when you're filling it, make sure you get an even amount of fruit in there so that someone thinks that, you know, especially if you're giving it to two people in the same household, someone will say, well, I got more fruit than you and they love me more. That's not true. And then you can just do something really simple um, to gift. This is just a, a paper napkin that happens to be purple. <laughs> um, and I'm just gonna put it over top with an elastic that's also purple. I have so much purple in my house, Tracy. Um, and then this is just like a great little gift, right? To give to whoever you want and say, have a great breakfast. You can maybe drop it off with, um, some strawberries, some fresh fruit or anything like that, a tub of yogurt and say, have a great breakfast. Um, we are also going to top our smoothie bowl. So you're gonna take about a quarter cup of this granola. I'm trying to balance out the fruit here, the dried fruit, okay? And then I have just a nice variety of mixed berries. I have raspberries, strawberries, blueberries. This doesn't have to be fresh. This could be frozen as well. Um, if you are putting them on top, I just like to thaw them a little bit first so that when you bite into it, it's not completely frozen. And then you can just put another little line of fresh berries on it. These raspberries are so big, they're beautiful. Okay. A few blueberries. And then an additional ingredient is some chia seeds. Okay. And those you can just sprinkle. If you have hemp seeds, that will work too. And that's going to give us an additional little crunch. Okay. If you had some coconut or anything like that that you wanted to add to as well, you could totally do that. Now, this is a hearty portion. This will fill you up for breakfast. It will be kind of that afternoon snack to keep you going if you need that. So if you are perhaps having some other items for breakfast, let's say you made some eggs as well, you could always have a smaller portion of this with the granola and the fresh fruit on it as well. So kind of make it um, fit whatever you're having. But I would be happy if I dug into this. When you, Tracy? I would definitely be happy. Now, I wanted really quickly, because this is, this is great. So um, if you're gonna swap out the Greek yogurt, just make sure you read your product labels, because some people said, can we use plant-based? Not all plant-based are fortified. Um, some have are fortified in calcium, but not with really there's not a lot of protein. You just have to look at your um, product labels and then make adjustments accordingly. Now, let's say you don't have time to sit and actually have the bowl. Emily, couldn't you just add a little bit more milk or plant-based fortified beverage and make it, I'm, so I have a smoothie every morning. I'm a huge smoothie fan. And then I would just pack the granola like as a snack for like my 10 o'clock snack, my 1030 snack, that kind of thing. So. Um, this is very versatile. We had someone say, what if I don't have berries? I don't want berries. There are so many amazing fruits out there, like uh, papaya, frozen papaya, frozen pineapple. I mean, this orange. There you go. You, 
you've used some of the rind, you can chop up this orange and add to it. I love chopped up pears, especially Bartlett's oh, yes. when they're nice and ripe chop it up and add that to your smoothie bowl. It's absolutely delicious. Even a nice, um, slightly sweeter apple would be delicious for a great crunch. The other thing you can do, and because you mentioned kind of on the go smoothie run, um, yes, you could add more liquid so that this could be um, a little bit kind of easier to drink through a straw because this one is not gonna be <laughs> through a straw. What you can actually do is throw a handful of the granola into the mix. Okay, it's going to give you a little bit more texture. You can add some of your beverage or milk in there to make it nice and smooth and then take it on the go. The other thing you can do is take this mixture, okay, which is nice and thick, and you can actually freeze it as your base to a smoothie. So you can divide it, let's say, into four portions. So you can put it in um, a resealable bag or a little um, plastic wrap and then wrap it up. And then what you can do in the morning is take it out, let it thaw just for a bit pop, or pop it in the microwave for 10 seconds to loosen it, put it into your blender with a little bit of your milk, buzz it up, and now you have a smoothie base. So it does have lots of versatility to fit kind of everybody's needs. It's not gonna look like this, but it's gonna have that beautiful flavor. And you can still add the granola to it and just mix it up in there, which is really nice. I'm filling this big jar because I'm going to send this to Tracy. Are you going to send it? Yay! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I love that freezing the smoothie bit because that's also, right, like quick quick meals or a quick snack or love it. Now, um, somebody asked, I'm just looking here, could somebody, if they wanted to add more protein, so they're, they're using all the ingredients, but they want to top it up with a bit of protein powder. That you may need to adjust the liquid, I'm thinking. So protein powder, you, it, you can add um, depending on, so usually it's a scoop that comes with your protein powder that will give you based on that scoop amount, how much protein you're gonna add. So you can add that scoop um, as per recommended. You, if you're only adding a tablespoon or so, which is less than that scoop, not a problem, but some of those protein powders do act as thickeners as well. So you might need to add a little bit of liquid. If you even happen to have, let's say you thawed some of your fruit, or if you had some fresh fruit, there's a little bit more juice in there and it's not solid. So you'll be able to use that as well if you didn't want to use a milk or um, a plant-based beverage. So you do have some options, um, which, which would work really nicely. So yes, protein powder would be great. You could also um, add some of the chia seeds right in there too. Chia seeds tend to keep everything together. They kind of thicken things. So it becomes a little bit more difficult um, to, unless you have one of those nice big straws to kind of um, drink that smoothie. You know what, play around with this. This is such, I mean, really smoothies, you can do anything with. I, someone even said, I think it's Judith that she, you know, um, she does it with her granola. Uh, she puts nut butter, but I add nut butter to my smoothies in the morning just because I'm having like some to. just because it's sitting here and I should just because it's it. You go right ahead. We, we always want Emily to do the taste test for us. How is it? So it's refreshing. It's so yum. It is. It's so, it's so wonderful. And because it's peaches, it's mm. making me think of, you know, August, okay. August, you know, the days of that. Don't rush us, Emily. Down. Don't rush I know, us. I know. Maze around the corner though. I, I know. Um, and I love the crunch of the granola. So it really does add, I'm very much a texture person. So having that smoothness from the bowl and then the crunch of the granola and that little bit of chew from the dried fruit and fresh fruit is absolutely delicious. I'm yes, dripping, I, I have agree. to eat it. I agree, I agree. Last thing I'll say is if you have a bunch of fresh fruit and you're like, oh, I'm not gonna use frozen fruit, I would put some ice cubes because otherwise it ends up being like a warm, Mm -hmm. kind of smoothie if you like it enjoy but if you want it colder but you like could also make it you could also make it warm and then just yes. freeze it right and exactly. then break it up exactly so it has Absolutely. a little bit more versatility in that Absolutely. sense if you're going to do it that way are there any other questions tracy no but me? actually we've got some one like everyone is like this has been such a wonderful thank you winalda presentation and angeline and uh, Louise there, a lot of them are like, they're ready to start cooking. And you know what? I love hearing that because really this is why we're doing this. The last thing I'm, I'm going to say, I think I said that before, but there's always more to say, <laughs> right? There's always more to say. 
the thing about the these two recipes, especially the granola, you know, things are expensive. We're looking for affordable items. All of those ingredients go on sale and they are pantry staples. So you can like buy the oats when they're on sale and the date, then you can put them on your shelf. And then, you know, you can buy all of that. When frozen fruit goes on sale, which I find always goes on sale in the summer, especially. Mm -hmm. It does, um, right. You can, you can buy it, you can pop it in your freezer and that way you can, you can make it. So that's great. So what we're gonna do right now is let's look at who is going to get the apron. I've got it right here. I'm just looking, let me make sure I say the right place and the right person. So <laughs> the Unbreakable Apron, congratulations, Carol Uday from Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. Yay, I'm gonna email you. Congrats. We're gonna send you the apron. And, um, and, and that's pretty much it today. Yay, congratulations, Carol. So thank you to, um, you are welcome everyone. So many lovely comments. You are, you are welcome from, from all of us. I'm just gonna share my, my screen. It's always the tech part that just, that's always, where are we going with that? All right, so let's just do that. Sorry about that, guys. There we go. All right. Now, you love these two recipes. We have so many others. And I know that, you know, if you've been on some of our other cooking demos, some of them may be familiar, but we've been doing this now for three years. So there are so many other recipes you want to check out on the Osteoporosis Canada website, osteoporosis.ca forward slash recipes, all different kinds of recipes. Um, I mentioned the calcium calculator. If you are looking for, um, there's not all foods on this calculator. It's really the main foods that have calcium in them. So you can go on and take a look, but also product labels, again, really important. We have the podcast. These are free. If you stream on iTunes, Spotify, or Google Podcasts, you can find Unbreakable, the OC podcast. Otherwise, you can just hit the play button on the OC website and listen right off the website. So we've got actually a bunch of new podcasts. We've got our blog. And of course, as I said, this is recorded. We have lots of other webinars that are recorded, all available on the OC Replay webpage. So you can watch previous cooking demos um, and you can watch other, other webinars. And um, thank you. Thank you to Emily, who always does such a fabulous job. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And as always, stay well, everyone. Happy cooking. Thank you so much for always joining us and supporting us and have a wonderful day. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, Tracy. Thanks, everybody.